Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a quick profit off of flipping. I often do like kind of complicated patterns and add a little bit of artistry, but in today's episode, I'm just gonna be painting and, well, painting. So I originally bought this piece for a commission. A lady asked me to find a piece for her that was like, credenza-ish, but dresser-ish, but also had cabinets and all that sort of stuff. And we found this particular piece, but I took off the hardware and realized that inside it was nothing but particle board. And also there was a lot of damage to the particle board that I didn't really see beforehand. So lesson one, always inspect your pieces before purchasing them. Do that, do that well. Cause I thought I inspected this. I thought it was solid wood, but it turned out not to be obviously. So I decided to flip this piece and just get it out of my garage for some quick dollars. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do the exact same thing. There is no sanding. All you have to do is clean the piece and you're pretty much good to go. All right, let's get flipping. So here is the piece. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace for $85. And as I said originally, this was intended to be a commissioned piece, but as I realized that it was particle board, I realized that we couldn't really do what the woman wanted me to do with it because she wanted it to be sanded down to its natural wood and uh, just lightly stained, kind of like a whitewash, but Honestly, I just didn't want to have to deal with a particle board and it would have just been a mess trying to repair it on the side and make it look like natural wood. So before I started cleaning, I wanted to take off all the hardware and this just allows you to kind of get into each little nook and cranny and really clean the hardware really clean the hardware well. Wow, try to say that one. Anyways, uh, yeah, so this um, will make sure that the paint sticks when you go to spray paint the hardware. Make sure you give them a really good clean. I unfortunately didn't film this process, but I just washed it with some water and vinegar and boiled it and then scrubbed it really good with a uh, fine steel wool sponge. And then once they are all rinsed off, you should be good for spraying them. This drawer had such a hard time getting out. I actually wasn't able to get it out for the entire painting process. It wasn't until afterwards where I was putting all the drawers in that I was finally able to get it out. But we moved on to priming. So I'm using a no sand primer. And as I said, this just makes it so, so easy and fast. It doesn't require any preparation work other than cleaning the piece. And all I did was wipe it down with a cloth and a um, bucket of water. And that's pretty much all you need. And just let that dry before you start priming the piece. So I did two coats of this primer and if you're looking for a really, really smooth finish, you can go in between coats once the first coat dries. You can go in with a really fine sand block and this is just a spongy block of sandpaper and it's a really fine grit. So like I would say anywhere between 200 and up. And this will just make sure that you get a really smooth finish and there aren't any like buildups of paint in between the coats. For the hardware, I made sure to lay them out on top of some cardboard so I wouldn't get the spray paint everywhere. And I made sure that all of the handles were pointing outwards so that I could get underneath the handles. And I just did little spritz here and there. I wasn't soaking it down. You don't want any drips, so you don't want to be too close to the pieces. And you want to spray uh, kind of from far away. And then once that coat is dry, you can go in and flip the handles over and get the front sides of them.
So before you use your roller, make sure that all of the water is out of the roller before you start using it. I did not do this and obviously I ended up having to roll it out on the cardboard to get most of the water out. It was so soaked, it actually thinned out my paint as you can see. It did not go on to the piece well at all and ended up being really really thin and watery but you know i just decided to go in anyways and get my first coat on there and obviously i ended up having to do two coats uh, whereas this paint i've used this paint before and usually i get pretty good coverage on it um that did not happen this time but lesson learned and uh, now you can learn from my mistakes i got you And here is that same paint going on without all the water in it. Look at how thick that goes on usually. It made such a big difference to make sure that roller was dry. And yeah, we're going in for the second coat, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you can go in with the uh, really, 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 really fine uh, sanding sponge and scuff everything up. And this will just make sure that it's nice and smooth. You can do that once the coat is dry. Make sure you're looking on your bucket of paint and all that good stuff to make sure you're leaving it for the recommended drying time before you go in and sand. Otherwise, it's gonna mess up your paint way more than not sanding it at all. So to top it all off, I went in there with some satin finish top coat and you want to be really careful when dealing with black paint and top coat and these crevices because they can easily just pool the top coat and the um, paint will actually dry white. And so especially with black, you want to make sure that you are brushing out all of the little creases and crevices and uh, making sure that it's really nice and smooth and thin in those little places where the top coat can pool. And I actually ended up putting two coats of top coat on the entire piece and then three coats of it on the top just because the top is going to be receiving the most wear. And then after all that was dry, I decided it was time to put on the hardware. So I just laid them gently on the pre-carved out places and then I screwed them in with the previous screws that came out of them. What a process, am I right? But look at that contrast though, the gold hardware and the black, mm, love it.
By the way, if you fancy this picture hanging up on the wall, I actually took it. So please feel free to go see my photography on my website where you can order prints and yeah. All right, guys, so that is the finished product. All in all, this piece took me probably about 12 hours to complete. It wasn't that hard at all. If you get no sand primer, it makes it so much easier because then you can just roll that primer on there and you're good to go. Because it does have a little bit of damage done to the particle board, I'm probably only gonna be selling this piece for about 300, whereas normally I would probably sell a piece like this for about $400 because it is just so big. Um, and then especially if you guys wanna add a little bit of artistry, like add some cool patterns when you open up those doors, you guys of course are more than welcome to and definitely will get a higher price for the piece if you do end up doing like a cool design and something that really makes it unique. Honestly, this piece was was super fast. A lot of the time spent was drying time. Um, so I actually didn't even end up having to spend like all of the 12 hours working on the piece. Actually working was probably more about six hours. All I had to do was prime it, paint it, seal it with a top coat and spray the uh, the hardware gold. That's literally all I did. I'm not trying to do any repairs because most of the repairs are cosmetic. If you guys want to stay posted to see how much I end up selling this piece for, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I do put a highlight story on my Instagram of all of the pieces that I sold with their purchase price and total put into it and then total profit afterwards and what I sold it for. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys like this flip and if you guys wanna see me do a specific style, please please let me know in the comments. I would love to be challenged and do something out of my comfort zone. So please comment those suggestions down below and I will uh, see you next time. Stay flipping guys. Mwah. <laughs>